Greetings, Dave Dickinson here from AstroGuys.com. And I thought with the May 20th annual solar eclipse coming up, it would be cool to check out the circumstances of a few special events that may occur during the solar eclipse. Unfortunately for most people, they won't, but some very out-of-the-way locations may see these, and some off-world locations as well. What I would like to see whenever there's a lunar or solar eclipse is what the specific circumstances might be or say, transits of the International Space Station in front of the sun or moon, how they look from different satellites like SDO or Proba B. The moon can actually come between those satellites because they're in closer in orbit than, say, SOHO that's out at one of the Lagrange points. So I thought it would be interesting to check these out, and I ran these brief simulations for the May 20th eclipse, and I'll try to talk through them, and we'll see what they look like. All right, first looking at the view here from the moon, you're seeing the very beginning of the annular eclipse, and the satellites outlined and selected are the International Space Station, ISS, and Proba B. Proba B is a solar observing satellite that the European Space Agency put up a few years ago. There's Proba B, there's SDO, the Solar Dynamics Observatory by NASA, and there's SOHO. However, SDO will not catch this eclipse. All right, you're seeing the very edge of the umbra down there, those yellow lines on the very edge of the Earth. That's the moon's penumbra, actually. The umbra is the center part, and that is the path of the annular eclipse coming across the Earth, across Far East Asia and over the Pacific, and eventually it's going to make landfall on the U.S. Now, this eclipse runs from, in all partial phases, runs from 2056 UT, uh, all the way out till 02249 UT. That's universal time, and that's over, crosses the international date line. So that is over May 20th into May 21st. So there it's actually on the side of May 21st when it crosses over. Interesting to note, wherever the International Space Station intersects, and it's going to be coming up over the horizon, right there, right under that line, since we're looking down from the moon, is going to be a shadow transit. You're going to see the International Space Station transit in front of the moon at the same time while it's, while it's in partial eclipse. Anyone within that circle is going to see a partial eclipse. Right dead center in that circle is a shadow about 50 miles across. It's actually not quite touching the Earth. That is the shadow of annularity, where you're going to see an annular eclipse, where you're going to see a ring around the moon. Incidentally, this video is sped up by about 300 times. And it's about time I should put out a warning out there for anybody that's watching this type of eclipse. Don't try to watch it with your naked eyes. Don't try to use any of the uh, methods that aren't approved specifically for observing the sun. And I won't go into those because uh, I don't want to give anybody any ideas. There are some very dangerous things you can do to observe the sun. Uh, don't do it. Use a filter that is designed specifically to observe the sun and affixes to the front of your telescope, not one that screws in your eyepiece lens because those will overheat and make sure you have uh, proof filter glass. These are kind of interesting to watch this loop around. Incidentally, I ran this on starry night and we're looking back at the earth from the moon. So I figured that you're getting a pretty good sense of the path because you're looking directly straight down because the moon is straight overhead as viewed from that center part of the earth. All right, now we're going to go to the ISS and we're going to get the view from the ISS to see if there are any partial eclipses that you're going to see from there. That's me leaving the moon. Sorry, nice simulation. Earth is down through the bedrock of the moon right now. FOB is a 10 degree field of view. All right. Back from the moon, zooming back in, down to the International Space Station. and it will line up. And our next simulation will be, and these are all, except the very last simulation, these are all done in 300 times uh, real time. This is a view from the International Space Station. Now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the orbit of the International Space Station superimposed on the motion of the moon. So as it's looping, the moon makes this looping motion when you're looking at it. I don't think they have anything that is capable of looking at the sun from the International Space Station, so I don't know if they're going to try to view this. Uh, there wouldn't be a lot of science involved with it. It would be more just kind of a gee whiz thing to actually see. 
now you're looking down, the earth is blocking the view right there. Give it a moment, and you'll see this when we do trouble B2. It's going to come back around, and then you're going to see moon and sunrise already partially eclipsed right there. 300 times again. Almost part fully eclipsed there, not quite. I was kind of curious to see if the ISS was just high enough to get in that bottom part of annularity, but it may be, but not quite, to get in the bottom part of the umbra, but not quite. Incidentally, this eclipse is related to the 1994 annular eclipse that also passed over the U.S. Same sorrow cycle, I believe, because they were about 18, 19 years ago. Uh, I saw that one from Sandusky, Ohio. And this is the first annular or total eclipse that wasn't partial. It comes another pass again since 1994, since that eclipse. We've had kind of an eclipse here. It comes again. I think it's going to be a shallower partial. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. We're not, we're kind of in an eclipse drought right now in the U.S. In the continental United States, we have not had an annular or total eclipse since 1994. I believe the last one was 72 was the last, somebody will probably correct me on that, I'm just uh, talking off my memory. Here, within the 70s, we had the last total solar eclipse. So we're due for another one in 2017, then we're going to have another one in 2017 and 2018. Alright. Here's a view from Proba B. Proba B gets some interesting ones that are almost quite annular eclipses, I thought. And Proba B, you may well see these videos go around the net. Um, ESA may put these videos out there to actually show these passes. Probably is not a solar observing satellite that gets a lot of press, not as much press as Stereo, A and B, Soho, SDO. Uh, here it comes again. And incidentally, Stereo, A and B won't see these, these eclipses because they're out in heliocentric orbit. Uh, the only ones that have the moon that can pass between the moon and the satellite are SDO and probably at least solar observing satellites. I don't know about high nodes. That may be one as well. Again, feel free to correct me in the comments. All right, coming back around again. This annular eclipse, incidentally, will be interesting to watch from the U.S. West Coast because it's going to be setting at that time. You're going to have a very uh, interesting view. Uh, it'll be a good chance to do a lot of horizon photography. I think Bryce Canyon. The very large array in Socorro, New Mexico is along the track. The Grand Canyon is along the track. Uh, there's going to be some interesting uh, photos that will probably come with this. Yeah, I think that Proba B probably gets this twice. Four times, I believe it is. I think I counted four times when I watched the simulation back. So you're going to see. We're going to do these for the transit of Venus when it gets closer to. One caveat that I will put out there. The ISS does occasionally change its orbit. Sometimes they do debris avoidance maneuvers and they do scheduled boosts as well. I tried to do this within a week or two prior uh, with the latest uh, two-line element TLE. So the simulation will be pretty close. Now we've got one that's coming up here in a bit too that's going to actually show a transit and it's from Sakhalin Island in Russia. Probably one of the best places in the very far northeastern Siberia that you're going to see an ISS transit with the solar transit at the same time. It goes pretty quick, and it's going to be in real time, too. It's only about 20 seconds long, so I don't know if I'll have a lot of time to talk through it here. And we're watching this looping motion. Yeah, the TLEs, uh, they're pretty close to accurate a week or two prior, though they may need a little bit of adjustment. A good website, and I'm going to have a post up on astroguys.com on everything about the eclipse coming right up as the eclipse uh, about a day or two prior. CalSky is a good place to look as well. Find these shadow transits. I'll have that information out there on my site. All right, real time. You see partial, about 50%, and there goes the International Space Station. I've watched it before. It's pretty quick when it does that. You barely see it in the camera. But if you're in Sakhalin Island, Russia, check that out. So everybody get out there, get your styling eclipse shade, shameless plug for astronomy magazine here with these, that I got some astronomy magazine, and make sure that if you're under the penumbra of the moon that you are observing the annular eclipse on May 20th.